dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. We're just a couple of seconds shy of 5 o'clock. I'm Will Puckett. And I'm Cassidy Strickland. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. Had a pleasant surprise yesterday when those temperatures kind of ramped up a bit. Felt really nice and it feels pretty good this morning too. Yeah, I didn't even have to wear a jacket coming into work, but I get really hot when I'm getting dressed, so that might be it. So you're going to need a little bit of a jacket this morning. It's not like it's 75 out, but it's a cool 50-ish or so, mid-50s. And we talked to Brandon earlier. We're supposed to get up to almost 60 today, which is a stark contrast from Monday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But don't get your hopes up. Brandon's going to give us a better look at what to expect throughout the day. Brandon? What goes up must come down, Will, and we're going to see that again as we head into the nighttime hours tonight. We're in a severe weather alert. They started at 5 o'clock this morning, and that's because we're trying to give you as much notice as we can. And one of our directors actually asked me a great question just a couple of minutes before the newscast. He said, why are we doing the severe weather alert day now? We do it 24 hours in advance to get you time to get prepared for it instead of doing it during the event. Let's get into it this morning. Live pinpoint Doppler radar. As we scan the skies, Moorhead seeing a little bit of rain up toward Rowan County and into central Kentucky, but not quite into most of the area just yet this morning. We're looking to our west. That's the cold front that's going to affect us, and you can already see the blue out toward parts of Illinois. That's where we're going to see that snow come in on the backside of this thing. Temperatures, though, very mild this morning. 54 right now in Hazard, 50 in Monticello. Somerset as well, mid to upper 40s in a lot of locations. <laughs> Look at the difference from yesterday. 33 degrees warmer than yesterday morning in Jackson, Prestonsburg, Monticello, Williamsburg at 23 degrees warmer. So big thing here. South winds cranking in. That's helping to drive our temperatures up, pulling in some of that warmer air from the south. Temperatures across the state. You see 50s pretty much in a lot of places as we head out the door this morning. Outside WYMT, quiet start to the day under mostly cloudy skies over Weinsburg as well this morning. Should be an action-packed day though. Between iced coffee and normal day today on the coffee meter because it's going to warm up continuously for a little while before it starts to stabilize and drop out the door forecast. Those rain chances also will kick up. Temperatures forecast to be in the mid upper 50s might be close to 60 in some spots. The rest of that forecast is on the way here in just a few minutes. And everybody wonders why everyone's getting sick. These temps aren't helping. Thanks, Brandon. Well, this week, the big story has been those cold temperatures across the United States. And while we saw a decent warm up yesterday and into today, cooler weather, like Brandon just said, will return soon. Each time the temperatures drop, the West Care Homeless Shelter in Pike County opens their doors for anyone, inviting them to come inside, stay warm and even shower. WYMT's Marianne Fletcher talked to a case manager about their service to the region. From 7 p.m. until 7 a.m., if the temperature drops below 32 degrees, the West Care Homeless Shelter serves the community as a warming shelter. You can come in, you can wash your clothes, your water freezes off. You don't even have to be homeless. You know, if your water freezes off, we'll let you wash your clothes, take a shower, get ready for work. Case manager Anna Wakeland says each year they house around 500 people. I talked to the homeless school coordinator and there's over 700 homeless children in the in the Pike County school system. And with the temperatures dropping, Wakeland says they see even more people during the winter months. The basic needs that we take for granted every day are the things they need every single day. We need those here. Anything from food to cleaning supplies. Wakeland says they are always taking donations in Pike County. Marianne Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. Now, after passing a background check, anyone can use the homeless shelter as a warming station. If you would like to donate, we have information on how to do so over at WYMT.com. Well, schools in Johnson County will be closed today, but not because of the weather. Instead, it's due to a confirmed case of hepatitis A. Superintendent Tom Cochran says crews will spend the day cleaning and sanitizing the facilities. He's encouraging parents to vaccinate their children for the disease if they have not already done so. The school has also seen several cases of the flu. Today will be a non-traditional instruction day for students. Meanwhile, people in Whitley County were able to get a free hepatitis A vaccination yesterday. The Whitley County Health Department, City Hall and Day Spring Health Clinics in Williamsburg came together for their first of two days. They will give out 600 doses of the vaccination. Yesterday, they gave out more than 260. I just want people to be aware that hepatitis A is a continuing issue in Kentucky, that vaccination is the most uh, is the best thing they can do to protect themselves and their family. 
you have a chance to receive the vaccination again, officials will begin giving the shots around noon at Williamsburg City Hall. They will be there until 6 in the evening. Meanwhile, in Logan County, West Virginia, an elementary student was diagnosed with bacterial meningitis. The diagnosis was made Friday. We are told the student attends Holden Elementary School and is the only student with the illness at this time. Thankfully, though, bacterial meningitis is not considered contagious compared with viral meningitis. Officials say the school was thoroughly cleaned as a precaution during the weekend. While the federal government shutdown continues, a new one emerges, this time on a local level. The new Knott County Judge Executive took office earlier this month. He says because an insurance tax form from 2017 expired several weeks ago, the county is now spending much more than it takes in, which is close to $900,000. In an unprecedented move, the fiscal court voted to approve a local county government shutdown instead of adding or increasing taxes for people in the county. We'll probably take layoff hits to every single department. And uh, our senior program, it's, it's going to be back to just what CRAD, uh, the grant, will provide us to be able to do. As far as services and uh, road services, uh, it'll be a pretty much emergency situations before we can uh, do much of anything. The county road department will not be able to make as many repairs. They will also be limited in how many roads they can treat and plow during severe winter weather. The partial shutdown also cancels health insurance for all county employees and elected officials. Meanwhile, a new bill in Virginia could give dogs and cats who are severely injured more justice. Senate Bill 1604 is focused on making it a felony for anyone who abuses a family pet. Currently, the only way to charge someone with a felony in Virginia is if a dog or cat dies from its injuries. The bill means that offenders could get up to five years in prison. prison rather. So far, the bill made it out of the committee and could be on the Senate and House floors for a vote soon. This morning, we hope to learn more about a vote concerning Sunday alcohol sales here in Hazard. The Hazard City Commission was set to discuss the sales with the first reading of the proposal. If passed, it will have a second reading next month. For alcohol sales on Sunday to happen in Hazard, there must be a majority vote. This would only be for the city, not the county. Now, the Alcohol Beverage Control Agency is looking into a deadly crash that killed six people on I-75. Police say Joey Lee Bailey was driving the wrong way. That's when he crashed into the Abbas family. Bailey grew up in Floyd County. Fayette County Coroner says Bailey's blood alcohol content was nearly four times the legal limit. The ABC could not give any other details on their investigation. Well, today is a very somber anniversary here in the Bluegrass. A year ago today, a gunman opened fire at Marshall County High School, killing two students. Bailey Holt and Preston Cope were both 15 when they were killed. This morning, they will be remembered at the high school. Extra counselors will be on hand to help students and staff. Now, 21 others were injured in the shooting. Police say the shooter was 15-year-old Gabriel Parker. He is charged with two counts of first-degree murder and 14 counts of first-degree assault. He is being tried as an adult. Police in Ennis, Texas say they are confident the body found in a creek bed is that of Emily Wade, who is from Kentucky. They believe her death was an accident. They say her car may have been swept away in the floodwaters the night she went missing. Her car has not been found. The Dallas County Medical Examiner's Office has yet to positively identify the body. Well, we want to update you on a story we first told you about yesterday on Mountain News this morning. An Amber Alert was canceled after a missing autistic boy from Kentucky was found safe. Ten-year-old Isaiah Boren was reported missing out of western Kentucky Monday. Officials were worried because he did not have the medication he needed. He was located around noon yesterday. The Louisville office of the FBI has not released the details of his disappearance. It is a project that, when finished, could change the entire downtown landscape in Whitesburg. The Daniel Boone Hotel has been unattended for the last three decades. In 2010, the city took control of it and has been in the process of turning it around. From the roof caving in to asbestos, termites, and now lead paint, the project continues to hit delays. But Mayor James Wiley Craft says the show will go on. The Daniel Boone is kind of the linchpin of, of the downtown Whitesburg area. 
and, uh, so, and, and it's one of the oldest buildings here. So we are, uh, we're, we're staying with it, we want to get it done, and we'll get it done. Now there is a site survey today addressing the asbestos, among other things. Well, 509 this morning, coming up on Mountain News this morning, the 2019 Oscar nominees are out. We will tell you who is in the running for one of the prestigious awards. Plus, we will take a look at what else is happening in Hollywood today in your Eye on Entertainment report. We're heading toward another loop de loop on the weather roller coaster ride. Strap in, I'll have the latest details on our next system in about two and a half minutes.